So recently I was on YouTube when I found a video created by Firefox all the way back in October of 2013. The video was called, Was Old Roblox Really Better? Which is pretty funny now because a lot of newer players think 2017 is considered old Roblox. This video is going to be based around discussing how the quality of Roblox as a platform has changed from around 2007 to 2022. Before I start covering the main points of this video, I'm going to define old Roblox in quotes as mainly 2010 and before, but I will be mostly talking about two different eras in Roblox history, 2006 to 2008 and now, but I will also mention the era of around 2011 to 2014 a few different times throughout this video. There have always been bad games on Roblox ever since the platform's inception. However, I do think as a game development platform, Roblox has improved a lot when it comes to features inside Roblox Studio and accessibility, and that the overall quality of games as a whole on the platform has increased dramatically. How the games page worked in 2007 and how it works now are very different. Back in 2007, it was entirely based on what had the most players at once, meaning if the site was pretty dead that day, you could play your own starter place and it would end up getting to the top of the games page. You could see a game on the games page once that would never ever be there again. In 2013, the games page was pretty similar to the 2007 games page, with many of the same games staying there for extended periods of time, with some random clickbait or copied games blowing up and ending up somewhere on that page. That was a pretty big problem around that time, with people like Jared Valdez and Julius Coles being a part of the problem. In 2022, half the games on the games page have been there for a few years now. I should also mention that the 2007 Roblox client is much worse than the current client, with many strange glitches, the FPS being capped at 30, and the client being strangely resource intensive even on modern PCs. I've heard people say before that games are worse now than they were in the early days, however as more games are made by more people, of course bad ones are going to be made. After all, the whole purpose of Roblox is giving kids around the world the resources to make the games they want to make. I'm going to be comparing sets of three different games from the homepage on three different occasions, July 16th, 2007, July 9th, 2013, and June 16th, 2022. For July 16th, 2007, we have Elements Obstacle Course, Pirates of the Robloxian, and The Giant's Home. The first two have been both changed into entirely new games or shut down since, so I'm going to be playing archives of them from 2007. Elements Obstacle Course is a pretty generic obby for this era of Roblox, although I should mention that obbies were actually pretty hard at this time because of how the characters moved in earlier clients. When you jumped onto a platform, your feet would dip slightly below the platform, causing you to die if there was lava beneath it. As well, you couldn't move while you were mid-jump, making the simplest of jumps difficult. Pirates of the Roblox in is a sword fighting game where two teams control pirate ships. The giant's home still exists on Roblox and hasn't been updated since February of 2007. Again, this is another fighting map with entirely broken weapons. Instead of ships, this time it's the coffee table instead of a giant's living room. For what we had on the games page in July of 2013, we have an early version of Q underscore Q's Neighborhood of Robloxia, which is still updated to this day, which is a game where you just kind of live your life in a city. You could pick whatever jobs you want, you could even choose to be homeless, not to be confused with the even earlier game by 1dev2 of the basically same name. We also have the pod games, which is very nostalgic for me as this is one of the first games I played when I'd first joined. This game is just your average mini games game and hasn't been updated since 2014, and it seems to only pick the exact same mini game every time. And lastly, we have the Gamer 101 Sword Fighting Tournament, which is exactly what it sounds like. As of 2022, the three most popular games on Roblox right now are Brookhaven RP, another town and city roleplay game similar to games previously mentioned, where you can live in a city with other users, own houses, roleplay, and more. We also have Adopt Me, which is basically a game where you can own virtual pets or you can own a house. And we have Blocks Fruits, which is a mostly PvP based game where you can either join the Marines team and the Pirates team and obtain Blocks Fruits, which can be used in battles. As Roblox has grown larger, many of the games shown have gotten more and more complex, which can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what kind of game you like. And as well, games have gotten more and more social. In the early days, the games were incredibly simple to learn, and many of them were brick battle or fighting games.
One thing I personally prefer about early Roblox in comparison to 2022 Roblox are its events. Events in the early days meant challenging the creativity of its users to win special prizes. Some of these early event prizes meant exclusive access to future features like avatar customization, special hats or accessories, and even physical items like t-shirts being shipped out to Roblox users. Nowadays, events usually mean, oh hey, have you ever heard of Gucci? This has been a problem for the site for almost 10 years at this point, so I'm not saying it's anything too new, but the early event and interaction from admins that the Roblox player base used to receive in the early days are missed by many. I think one of the things that people most miss about how Roblox was in the early days of the website versus now is the creativity, fun, and the overall liveliness that any aspect of the website once had. With Roblox presenting itself as a fun, colorful game where you can build whatever you want, play games by other random kids from across the world, fucking blow up a giant killer Barney, you could do anything. Now it looks like a cryptocurrency company. Of course Roblox was going to become more corporate as time goes on with it going public and all. I don't know who's gonna buy stuff stocks in this, but a lot of players miss the friendliness and charm that the company once exhibited and in comparison, think Roblox now looks almost soulless. Moderation is a big one, as it's one of the points that a lot of people bring up when comparing old Roblox with new Roblox, as well as one of Roblox's hugest flaws. For as long as Roblox has existed, poor moderation has always been a complaint. At the end of 2006, there were only four people working at Roblox, with these four doubling up as moderators of the game chats, games that were being uploaded, and the forums. These four were David Bazuki and Eric Castle, who were the CEOs, followed by John Shedletsky and Matt Duke who were both hired in the summer of 2006. Throughout 2007 and 2008, many more moderators joined, such as Reese McBlocks, Clockwork, Noob007, Koopa, Scripter, Wukong, and Stoiker. However, as the moderation team became larger, the community basically became 10 times larger. Moderation has never been their strong suit, with Roblox resorting to using bots and systems that only work about 30% of the time, instead of people to reason with, which is the only choice that really makes sense with a community of over 3 billion. This is also why I'm honestly content that the Roblox forums were deprecated, as if the Roblox forums existed in 2022, they would be a cesspool, as ever since the Roblox forums were deprecated, the community's size has more than septupled. Imagine if something like the Jared Pogi Cabo incident happened in 2006, Roblox wouldn't even be something that exists today. No big platforms moderation is great, as the moderation services for platforms like YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and more have have had enormous slip-ups over the years. Taking that and how Roblox's moderation has evolved into consideration, Roblox's moderation isn't as awful as it could be, however some absolutely terrible things have been able to slip through the cracks. Most swear words in other languages and words like the R word and F word weren't filtered out until around 2012 or 2013. As well as this, Roblox used to not have a system that would prevent people from saying inappropriate things on the website, and instead would delete it when it does actually happen leading to things like forum posts with inappropriate language being archived and accounts with inappropriate names existing but being banned. The community has grown a lot since Roblox's inception. To put Roblox's community's growth into perspective, throughout the entirety of 2006, 11,253 users joined, which would be about one user every 36 minutes. In 2021 alone, almost a billion users joined, which would be about 25 users every second. And especially around 2008 to 2012, Roblox's marketing started shifting from targeting users around 10 to 16 years old to users even younger than 10. Obviously, as a community becomes larger, the community will become even more toxic. If a community of 5,000 had 10 annoying people, then that community continued to grow. Of course, the amount of normal people and annoying people would grow at the same time. I see a lot of people say how there was absolutely no toxicity back in old Roblox and there was no online daters, but like I said, as a community grows larger, the community will obviously become more toxic. Right now, there are well over 3.5 billion Roblox accounts 
accounts registered. And back in 2007, for example, a lot of people knew each other and the Roblox community was basically the Wild West. Two things I do really miss about the early Roblox community, the admin to player interaction that was very common, some examples being the test servers that admins held in early 2008, the other thing I miss about early Roblox's community is the then lack of the now all too common problem of groomers and pedophiles in the Roblox community. It almost feels like every other day some now washed up Roblox YouTuber or developer you haven't heard from in a few years is being outed as a child predator. With the community being so small in the early days, this was almost entirely not a problem, and if it was, it probably slipped through the cracks of the poor moderation there was at the time. For the final verdict on whether you think old Roblox is better or not, it completely depends on why you started playing Roblox in the first place, and why you enjoyed it when you started. Maybe it's because people don't like how corporate the platform has gotten, thinking it's lost its charm. In the last few years online, I've seen more and more people describing songs, videos, and other media that give off nostalgic feelings as giving them nostalgia for a time they didn't live in. This is probably why a lot of users who clearly didn't join in the early days of the platform wish that they did play in that time frame. I personally think it depends on what aspect of Roblox you enjoy the most, the socialization aspect, the games, or whatever else. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.